Hello, fellow readers. My name is Beth Ferry, and I am the author of Roar for Reading, a picture book I'd like to share with you. Roar for Reading, illustrated by Andrew Joyner. The history of lions and libraries is long and curious. No one knows exactly how or why the first lion came to the first library. It may have been because libraries were once small and books were once rare. And who better to guard something rare and precious than someone who could roar? In olden days, lions could tell with just one sniff whether something was amiss, whether a book should be loaned or hidden, whether a roar was required or not. Lions became the guardians of libraries everywhere. They soon became known as librarians. As time passed, libraries grew bigger. Books became abundant and accessible. Libraries transformed into wonderful places where books and stories were everywhere and for everyone. Things were peaceful and quiet, and roars became so scarce they all but disappeared. And librarians, well, they were able to get back to the business of reading and recommending books. In fact, they almost forgot they could roar. Until Miss Millicent, head librarian, received a letter in the mail. She read it once, then again. Julius, get your coat, she said. Julius looked up from his book. His mother was holding a letter so tightly she was crumpling it. Julius put on his coat. Where are we going, he asked. To see the mayor. The mayor used words that Julius didn't understand. Controversial, inappropriate, conservative. His mother replied with even more confusing words. Banning, censorship, accessibility. His mother talked and talked until it seemed she had no words left. She was silent as they walked back to the library. She was silent when she uncrumpled the letter. She was silent when she began pulling book after book off the shelves. What are you doing? Julius asked. Some folks think that these books are dangerous, she answered, and it seems the mayor agrees. Julius looked at the growing pile. So no one can read these books? No, but that one's Mrs. Leone's favorite. It's mine too, his mother said sadly. Julius got a funny feeling. He ran to the shelf where he kept his favorite books. He felt a rush of relief when he saw them, these stories that he loved so much. The one he had read 33 times. The one he was saving for the first day of summer. The special one he read with his grandmother. He wondered if anyone would ever tell him he couldn't read them. Julius felt a rumble in his belly that he had never felt before. But it wasn't a rumble. It was a roar. His mother came running. Julius, are you okay? But she could see that he wasn't, that all of this wasn't okay. His mother felt a rumble too, a grumble rumble that came roaring out of her. Mother and son roared together. They roared until they remembered what they were and what they could do. We're lions, Julius stated. That we are, said his mother, and our library needs us. The quiet library was no longer quiet. It was filled with book lovers and librarians who'd heard the roars, who had found the roar within themselves, who had remembered that libraries once needed protection and now did once again. They gathered and marched and protested. They fought for the words that tell us we are not alone, for the stories that connect us, for the books that hold ideas that can change the world. They gathered and they roared and they didn't stop until. Julius's mother handed him a pile of books. He recognized them immediately. Can I put these back, he asked. You absolutely can, she answered. And even though the library was once again quiet and the stacks were once again full and the library was once again safe, Julius roared. He roared in relief. He roared in delight. He roared because he was a lion, a lion who sat in a library and could read any book he wanted. The end. How can you roar?
Recognize that there have been book bans and censorship in your school or town library. Organize with other students, caregivers, and educators who understand that banning books is not the answer to any problem. Act. Write letters to your school board or mayor. Attend school board meetings with your caregiver and ask that books not be banned. Respect everyone's right to read what interests them. For more information, you can visit the American Library Association's website, ala.org, and banbooksweek.org. Thank you.